Hey everyone, Ms. Lassiter here, and in today's video, I'm gonna give you everything you need to know about the FRQ section of the AP Biology exam. I'm gonna tell you everything that you can expect to be on this test, and I've updated some of my tips to make sure they are up to date with the 2021 AP exam changes that reflect all of the different ways that you could be taking the exam this year, and make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video to learn about some tips for how best to prepare for the AP Biology FRQs. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, FRQs stand for free response questions. This is the second half of the test. It is the second section after all the multiple choice questions come. You get a break, then you come to section two, and this is actually worth half of your score. So the FRQs are really important, and if you haven't practiced FRQs before, they can seem a little daunting, but with a little practice and some of these tips, you're gonna find yourselves doing really well on these FRQ or free response questions. So technically you have 90 minutes to complete six questions, which seems like a lot, but when it's broken down into all the different steps and things that you need to read, sometimes you might be rushing to finish your work. So there's going to be two longer questions and four shorter questions for a total of six questions in this 90 minute period. You have a 10 minute reading period at the beginning, but you can start whenever you want. I really do recommend students try to outline and read through all the questions first before they actually go in and start answering because planning out your plan of attack and which questions you're going to answer in which order is definitely a great way to save time and make sure you're being as efficient as possible on the AP Biology exam. So the long FRQs are not actually essays. Remember, there are two of these and you just have to answer a few more things and there might be a little bit more information provided to you as compared to the shorter FRQs. So there's two long FRQs and these are mostly based on experimental data. So it'll tell you about an experimental setup or some data that some scientists or students have collected or give you some sort of information or something you might need to calculate. Now in a moment I'm going to go through every single science practice that is on each question so make sure you stay tuned for that. In the first question you're going to need to both interpret and evaluate some experimental results. And in the second question, you're going to need to interpret and evaluate experimental results, but there will also be some graphing stuff involved. Now, if you've watched my video about the updates to the AP Biology exam this year, you know that if you're taking the exam digitally, you will not need to construct any graphs by hand. You may, however, still need to be able to interpret graphs or read a graph or calculate something based on a graph. So you're not totally off the hook for graphing questions. You may even need to propose which type of graph and how you would set up a graph. But if you're taking the exam online, you will not actually have to make a graph or draw anything at all. In fact, with this exam, the digital version, you won't need to draw anything, write anything by hand, or construct anything with symbols that you wouldn't be able to easily type. There will be no picture uploading at all. We'll talk a little bit more about what you need for the digital exam in just a moment, but let's see what's on the rest of these FRQs. So the short FRQs are going to involve several different science practices that AP Biology is all about. These include scientific investigation, conceptual analysis, analysis of a model or visual representation, and data analysis. So if we look at each of these questions here, this is where the points that you're going to be earning come from for each question. For the long FRQs, you'll notice you'll have to be doing a few more things for, per question. But you will see on each question, the pattern will be like this. Now, if you've seen old FRQs in biology, they don't necessarily follow this format. This new system started in for the 2020 exam, but the 2020 exam got a little crazy because of COVID. So 2021 is the first year we're actually going to be seeing this full format on the AP Biology exam. You can still look at old FRQs to practice, and that's a great way to prepare for this section of the exam, but it may not necessarily reflect this exact format. So here's the breakdown of what you'll see on each question. For the first long FRQ, you're going to have to do some explanation of concepts, talking about questions and methods. This means maybe posing a testable question or talking about the methods that you would need to do to measure something. You're also going to need to represent and describe data. And so since you're not graphing, if you're doing the digital exam, this means talking about trends, looking at data points and telling what a graph is showing you or describing relationships between variables. You may need to identify if there's statistical significance in a data set based on where the error bars overlap. And of course, you'll notice argumentation comes up in question one and quite a lot on the exam. This is about making claims, supporting claims, and justifying claims with scientific evidence. Question two, you'll see these things come up again, probably a little bit more focused on the graph this time. And when you get to question three, you're mostly just focused on concept explanation, talking about methods, or posing a testable scientific question. 
On question number four, it's mostly about that concept explanation and argumentation. And question number five is going to be about concept explanation and a visual representation. If you're doing the exam digitally, what that means is you will not need to draw anything, but you may need to interpret a visual model about something or describe what's happening in a picture. You might even need to connect a visual model to a larger biological process. For question six, you're going to talk about data. You might have to perform a statistical test, interpret the results of a statistical test, and then of course argumentation pops up again. So since you know what's going to show up on each question, you also know what you might need to practice. Don't spend all of your prep doing practice for visual representation because you know that's only going to come up on question number five. But you can also see that concept explanation and argumentation, so justifying, evaluating, making claims, that comes up a lot. So those are things that you're definitely going to want to practice and look for in old FRQs to see exactly what that means for the exam. If you're taking the exam in person for the FRQ section, you're going to need a blue or black pen. I have had students in the past who've shown up with a pencil then realize they can't write in pencil and they have to go through and write over their answers in a blue or black pen. Your exam administrator should not let you write in pencil though for this section. You will be allowed to use a calculator for this section. This is digital or in person and that means it can be one of the approved calculators from the College Board website. I'll put the link for that in the description of this video so you can check that out for yourself. Obviously bring your brain, bring your thinking caps, and if you're taking the exam digitally you're going to need a computer with a webcam. And this is mostly we think to verify your identity at the beginning of the exam, so but make sure you check out my other video with the description of everything you need for the exam if you're taking it digitally. If you're taking the exam in person you do not need scratch paper, that will be provided to you. You do not need a pencil. Obviously you don't need technology or a phone that should be confiscated from you before you take the exam. You will get a formula sheet so you don't need to bring your own. I did have a student one year bring their own formula sheet into the exam and then that exam had to be canceled because technically it was an unauthorized aid on the exam even though it was the exact same formula sheet as appeared on the exam. So don't bring your own formula sheet. And then of course if you're doing the digital version of the exam you won't need to take any pictures or upload them like students might have in the past. This year there's no uploading of pictures, no drawing, no hand graphing. Everything you need to be able to do will be done by typing on a keyboard. So the best ways to prepare for FRQs is to see the wording and try the old FRQs. Now they're not going to be exactly like the ones you'll see now. Like I said this format is a little new but the actual rigor of the questions and the ways things are asked is going to be very similar similar to the old ones. So I'll put the link to those old FRQs in the description of this video. So make sure you try them for yourselves. Time yourself out. Spend a whole 90 minutes trying it and then stop. See how much you could do. Grade it for yourself. You can also easily Google scoring guidelines to find the answer keys for old FRQs. So those are all out there and available on the web for you. You can also look at FRQs in your practice prep books, but the ones the College Board provide are going to be the most like the ones that you'll see on the exam. And the best way to practice for this particular part of the test. Remember if you're looking at FRQs before 2019 they're not going to be the exact format of the questions that will appear from 2021 and moving forward but they'll be a good way to practice. I wouldn't go any earlier than 2013 though. Those are really old versions of the exam so those are going to cover content that's not even touched on on our current exam. So I would go anywhere from 2013 and beyond to practice your old FRQs. In general you want to make sure you plan out your time. Like I said use that reading period to figure out which questions you can answer first and fastest and then go through and answer the other ones as you see fit on the exam. Start with the easiest one and then work your way up from there. Don't leave any questions blank. Even if you're not sure, you can go ahead and jot something down. Put something down that you think you know about biology in the question, even if you're 100% lost. Remember to answer what the question is asking. Don't give us an essay on natural selection if it's just asking you to calculate one part of Hardy-Weinberg. Remember your graders are not looking for beautifully written, well-formatted essays. They're looking for the correct answers to the question. You still have to write in complete sentences. They will not accept lists or bullet point responses, but you do not need to write a topic sentence, paragraphs, arguments. You just need to get out your ideas in a sentence or two. Again, don't restate the question. You don't need to waste time doing that. This is not an English essay. No bullet points, lists, or drawings. And don't obsess over perfect grammar or spelling. Points won't be counted off for grammatical errors. As long as you are understood, the graders are going to read your responses as best they can. 
Make sure you use the formula sheet when you have to perform any calculations. It's your friend. Use your calculator. It's your friend. And show how you set up the problem. Sometimes you can get points for even just putting the problem out or telling how you calculated something. So don't be afraid to show your work on the exam. If you're taking it in person, you may have to construct a graph. We know you're not going to need to do that digitally, but if you are graphing, make sure you include a title, labels for both your axes, and any units that are required. Make sure you scale the graph, and most importantly, make sure you select the correct type of graph for the question. If you have extra time when you're done, don't just sit there. Make sure you read the prompt, prompt again. Try to see if there's anything that you might have missed the first time around, and you can keep writing. Look out for contradictions, though. If you add to your answer and contradict something you said before, you will not be given points for it. It's okay if you have an incorrect thing in one part of your answer and a correct thing later on, as long as they don't contradict each other. The graders are looking to give you points where they can, so do your best to put out any information that is correct. Don't overwrite, but answer answer the question and put out information that you think will best support the answer. One of the things that freaks a lot of students out on the exam is seeing new concepts that they've never heard of before. This is actually really common. You'll see new experimental techniques, you'll see new data sets, you'll see a new phenomenon that you might not have known about before. And that's okay. The AP Biology exam is meant to test your application of science skills and practices and not necessarily asking you to know everything about biology. So if you see something new that you've never seen before, think about how you can apply what you do know to that new concept or experiment. I think the comment assay question in 2017 is a great example of this. I wouldn't expect any of my students to know what a comment assay was, but I would expect them to know about the properties of DNA and electrophoresis. If you knew enough about that, then you would be able to answer question parts pretty well. So I'll link to that question in the description below and see if you can answer it yourself with what you know about DNA and gel electrophoresis. Again, don't freak out when there's new things there. You'll be able to do it as long as you have a solid foundation in the content from AP Biology. So you've got this. Take the time to practice. Now you know exactly what's going to be on the AP Biology FRQs. Make sure you post any questions about AP Biology FRQs in the comments below. Give this video a like if it's been helpful and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you later.